give you a little introduction. away where time cannot find me at all just a breath away nothing here but heaven nowhere but love to fall as I go within The sweetness that waits, holy yest embrace that reminds me I am always home as I go within quiet peace. Offer something. The sweetness that waits, holy yest embrace that reminds me I am always home. It's here that I am always I'm Jan, and I'm a practitioner here at Seaside. And so let's take that lovely music and this wonderful opportunity to be together and breathe into what we know best about ourselves, that we are part and parcel of all that God is, that life is here for us. Life is given unto us so that we may express the creative wonder of the divine. So we know that one power and presence is here in each of us. We know that it is alive and well and expressing through each of us, for we are the expression. Each of us is the expression of the life of God. And so we move into this wonderful time together, this sacred evening, this going within service, looking at life and love as the wonders that are part of everything we desire and everything that we are about. And so as we begin this day and, and we begin each of the days of our time here on this planet, we remember that love and joy and the wonder of limitless potential belong to each of us. And we set that energy for tonight in a welcoming and joyful manner, bringing about all that, that strengthens our conviction, our knowledge, our practice of living the life of God. And so it is. So I've chosen a reading for tonight from Ernest Holmes' in the living of the science of mind. That's one of my favorite places to gather readings. I like, I like the people and the, the more natural speak of that for myself. And I took it from some passages that are in How to Build Your Tomorrow Today. For every person is the cause of their own experience, whether they know it or not. 
We are all carrying the negative experiences of our past into the future merely because we have not disconnected them yet from our minds. If we are creating a negative future, it is because we have not changed our thought about it. But before we can entirely disconnect ourselves from the negations of the past, we have to learn to fill the mind with positive acceptances, which are so much greater and deeper than all the negations we have been entertaining, that they consume them by their very presence, just as light dissipates darkness. When we are weeding our gardens, we often find certain plants that are choking out the growth of the very thing we wish to harvest. So we pull them up, throw them aside, cultivating only those plants that we want to mature. We do this today. Yesterday is past. Tomorrow has not yet arrived. So the only time we can weed our garden is today, right here and right now. And one other thing we have to realize is that we did not make the laws of life. We only use them. The power that makes the garden is a power greater than we are. All we do is use it. Of necessity, the creative soil had to produce the weeds that hamper the growth of the desirable plants. And then, of necessity, that same law has to stop creating them when we uproot them and support the desirable. We are swinging into line with the great harmony of the universe. Are we permitting a life of love to blossom in our lives? Knowing that God is the only presence and the only power in the universe, and knowing that God is love, I deliberately turn from everything that is unlike this love. And so taking that in, we have an opportunity to practice right away, right here, right now, moving into some meditation through some beautiful music with Aria and Jim. So they will lead us in and they will usher us out.
of your peace where there is hatred let me sow love where there is injury pardon where there is doubt faith where there is despair hope where there is darkness light where there is sadness joy oh divine master grant that i may not so much seek to be consoled as as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love for it's in giving that we and dying that we are born to eternal life O oh, divine master grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love for it's in giving that we receive and it's in pardon that we are pardoned It's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Arya. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jan. We're so glad you're back with us. Yes. Well, welcome. I've missed you. It seems like it's been forever since I was here. I was gone two weeks ago, and Bill Salisbury was here. I was at the Science of Mind convention in Las Vegas. It's our annual business meeting convention. Las Vegas, I'm not so sure about. A bunch of ministers running around Las Vegas, you know. And we had our practitioners and laity. It's open to everybody. It's our time that we come together once a year and vo vote on any bylaw changes or take care of business. We have keynote speakers and workshops. And so it's a wonderful time to come together. Next year, I'll be in Salt Lake City. The skiers are excited about that. So if you're a skier, plan on going next year. And Bill was here. Bill Salisbury was a... It was in ministerial school with me. He's getting ready to graduate in June, June 7th here at Seaside. Uh, I got to see a lot of my ministerial friends at the convention. That was a great opportunity to go and be with them. I was very grateful for Bill to be here and to speak for you. I'm sure you enjoyed him. Was he good? Yeah, yeah. Bill and I took our homiletics together with Dr. Christian, and that's the class where we work on speaking. So I knew he was going to be good for you. And... Uh, Come out and see him graduate. He just finished all his exams. We're knowing he passed. Good to go. Good, good. So the other thing that's going on around here is we're in the second week of our 40 days of creativity here at Seaside. You may have noticed we have some creative expressions going on here. We have our banners that various artists have painted for the Mardi Gras. We have a 
wave that's being built out in the entrance, on the side entrance there. It's a beautiful wave that's going to hold the uh, place for all of our donors' names, everybody that's contributed to the roof and other things that we've had here at Seaside. Um, and we have our 40-day guide. I hope Reverend Lori had it for you last week, our 40 days of creativity. We began on February 22nd. It's sort of our Lent season. We're doing a reading every day through to Easter Sunday. So Dr. Christian has written the Sunday messages, and those are his Sunday messages that he's giving on stage on Sunday. And there's also the book that goes along with our sacred circles. So if you have an opportunity and you haven't had an opportunity to sign up for a sacred circle, please do so. There's still some availability in the family room and a few of the circles. Trudy, I don't know if Trudy's here. She has one out in Vista that still has some spots. And a couple of our Encinitas ones. And Reverend Lori has a couple spots down in Mission Valley if you come from down south. If you didn't get your 40-day guide, please know it's available by PDF on the website. So download it and read along with us. I'm going to start tonight by reading the quote that's for today. Um, my talk title today is Paint Me a Picture, which is going along with our, our theme here of creating an amazing life and these 40 days of creativity. And the practitioner that wrote today's is practitioner Jackie Mayo. She is one of the original practitioners here at Seaside. She's came with us from Del Mar. She's kind of the grandma of all practitioners here at Seaside. Her daughter is a practitioner. Her grandchildren are religious scientists, so she has a long lineage. And she wrote today's, and it's just the quote that I think is just perfect. The whole thing's beautiful, but I'm going to read the quote. You must give birth to your images. They are the future waiting to be born. The future must enter you long before it happens. Just wait for the hour, the birth of new clarity. And so as I'm talking about paint me a picture, we're talking about birthing those images, birthing those images in you. When an artist begins to paint a picture or a sculptor begins to sculpt a, a art form or an actor begins to work on a character, whether for film or theater, the very first thing that, that he or she does is have an idea, an idea or an image of what that is going to look like. Before the first paint brush is, the first stroke is brushed, before the first chip is taken on that block of marble or wood, the artist already has an idea. So everything we know, everything is born from our thoughts. Everything starts with that idea in form, into form. So, so it is with us. So it is with our lives. We want to have an idea of what we want to create before we begin the journey. We want to have an idea of what is this life that we're creating? What is this amazing life that we're talking about? What does that look like for us? I found a story about Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I think it represents this very well. well. Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1976 was getting ready to retire from the bodybuilding world. And he wasn't that well known except in the bodybuilding world. And he was interviewed by a reporter, and the reporter asked him what he was going to do next now that he's retired. And he said, well, I'm going to be the number one star in Hollywood. And the reporter was a little amused by that, being that he didn't quite have the body type for a leading man, all the muscles that he had then. He had never acted. He didn't speak very good English, and he had a very, very strong Austrian accent. So the reporter asked him how he intended to become the number one star in Hollywood, and this is what he said. I want to read it because he says it just perfectly. I'll do it the same way I became the number one bodybuilder in the world. What I do is create a vision of who I want to be. Then I start living like that person in my mind as if it was already done. Sounds pretty childlike, pretty simplistic, right? But it worked. It worked. Holding that image, knowing, acting as if he already was the number one star in Hollywood, and he did become the number one paid star in Hollywood. If you can see it, you can believe it. That's what he says. If you can see it, you can be it, excuse me. If you can see it, you can be it. 
So the first step on creating any work of art in creating your life is getting clear on what it is that you're wanting to create. I spent many years of my life claiming that I was confused. I said it all the time. I'm so confused, I'm so confused, I'm so confused. I don't know what to do, I'm so confused. I don't know what I want to be, I don't know what I want to do. Until the day that I realized that that is absolutely what I was creating. I was creating confusion. You know, and part of the reason that I, I stayed in that confusion is because I was afraid. I was afraid to make a mistake. I was afraid to make a wrong choice. I was afraid uh, to, to, to commit. And part of the reason for that, that I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what God's will was for me. And that really had me stuck for a very long time. You know, there were some areas of my life that I was very clear, and there were some areas of my life that were moving along just fine with my children and my parenting and my relationship, my home life. That was moving along. We had an abundant business. We were doing very well financially. But in this track of my personal, what did I want to be, I was stuck. Did I want to be an artist? That's something that calls to my soul. I've been painting since I was a little girl. Did I want to be a therapist? That was something that called to me. Did I want to be a minister? I don't know. That was a little bit scary. And, uh, and, and, and so I sat in this confusion for a very long time. And what happened for me is that I started along the path and I started uncovering things about myself. And I knew that when I was very young, I knew from the time I was very young that I wanted to serve spirit, that I was here to work for God. I knew that. I knew that from probably first, second grade. And I was raised Catholic, went to parochial school, and back then we had the old Baltimore Catechism. I don't know if any of you had that. But one of the things that we did in class is we had to memorize the questions and the answers. And one of the questions was, why are we here? And the answer was to love, honor, and serve God. And I memorized that in first grade. I knew it. Why were we here? We're here to love, honor, and serve God. And, you know, that just resonated with me, even though I no longer prescribe to the Catholic way of looking at God or that God has totally morphed and changed for me. The idea that I am here to serve is something that resonated with my soul. And I knew that from the time I was very little. But I was very confused about what is God's will? What is God's will for me? And then I came to realize that God's will for me was the same as my will for me, that there's absolutely no separation. How can there be? As God and I are one, then our will is the same, is it not? Ernest Holmes, in Living the Science of Mind, Jan and I both chose the same book tonight. In Living the Science of Mind, he says this, and it's, you know, Living the Science of Mind is full of a bunch of little essays. If you don't have that book, it's a good companion for your Science of Mind textbook. It has a bunch of essays on different topics, and you can just open it and read any subject that appeals to you. There's an index in the front, and he has one essay on God's will. And it's five pages long, and I am not going to read you five pages, but I'm going to read you just a little bit of what he said. Ernest Holm writes about God's will. He says this. In the science of mind, we are frequently asked this question, what is God's will? This question is as old as time, and the answer has been as varied as have been the mentality of those who have gave it. If we have taken a rational viewpoint of the question, shall we not be compelled to accept as the only logical conclusion that the will of God must ever be consistent with the nature of the divine being? It's so one of the things that's so great about Ernest. He's so logical. I would have loved to have him on a debate team. You know, he just thinks it through. If this is true, then that has to be true. God's will and God's nature must be identical. If the nature of God is limitation and bondage, the will of God must also be limitation and bondage. If the nature of God or reality were unhappiness, then the will of God would be toward unhappiness. But to suppose that the nature of God be could be toward any form of limitation is to suppose not only an inconsistency, but an impossibility. The truth is limitless. The nature of God then is not one of limitation or bondage, but one of freedom. Therefore, the scriptures tell us that we have inherited not bondage, but liberty. The nature of God is wholeness. The nature of wholeness is happiness. The nature of happiness is peace. The nature of peace is harmony. The nature of harmony is joy. 
So whichever way we turn the proposition, we are compelled to understand that the nature of reality, the nature of God is perfect. Therefore, the will of God, which can never be divorced from God's nature, must always be a will towards our wholeness, peace, poise, power, and self-expression. And so it is. The will of God can never be separate from our will. And the will of God is good. So what do we want to create? What do we want to create for ourselves? We want to set clear intentions for ourselves as we're looking at painting this picture of our life. And one of the things we want to do when looking at intentions is we want to look at our values. In the practitioner training, the lesson on values is the same lesson on intention. They go together. So if we have a clear sense of what our values are, we can create clear intentions for ourselves. It's very important. It's very important to, lay, to look at what your values are. Are they in alignment with your beliefs? And are they in alignment with your intention? It is through our beliefs that we create our values. And through our values, we create our intentions. An example for me is that I have a belief. I have a belief that God is love and only love. I believe that with every core of my being that God is love. And because I have that belief system, one of the values that I cherish most is relationships. I cherish my relationships with my children, with my partner, with my family, with my friends. And so my intention in life that is born out of this value is that I be the best mother that I can be, that I be the best daughter that I can be, that I be the best sister that I can be, that I put my relationships first before my work, before my chores, before my other duties. Relationships rank really high for me. So that is my intention in life, that I develop these relationships. That's a priority for me. What's a priority for you? You want to take a look at that. What are your values? There's all kinds of things on the internet. There's all kinds of worksheets that you can find if you Google values. Almost every life coaching system has worksheets that help you look at your values. What do you value? They have you list, you know, 50, and then you cut it down to 25, and then you cut it down to 10, and then you cut it down to 5. You know, what are my five most, what do I value the most? And so once you've become clear on your values, then you can start taking a look at what intentions do I want to set in my life. Remember, you're creating a masterpiece. You're creating your life. Ernest Holmes says this about intentions. If someone should ask whether or not God has any intentions for him, the only answer would be that the only intention God could have if man is an individual would be to let that individual alone to discover himself. So there's no plan that God has as opposed to your plan for your life. Your plan for your life is to be, to love, to flourish, to live in abundance. That's God's plan for your life. So you want to try a little exercise with me? I'm going to try a little exercise on setting intentions. So just take a moment and get comfortable in your chair. And you can go ahead and close your eyes if that feels comfortable. We're just going to do this for about a minute. Just practice a little exercise. Think of a specific goal or desire that you have in mind, a specific goal or intention, something you've been wanting to create in your life, and just imagine that. And imagine that happening in your mind's eye right now. Imagine that happening in the present. Use all of your senses to imagine this. Imagine what it feels like. Imagine what it tastes like, what it looks like, what it feels like. Imagine everything about it. Imagine the people around you. Imagine your family there cheering you on or your friends cheering you on. Get a full sense of accomplishing this intention or goal in your life. Notice anything that comes up that's like a little uh-oh or a little obstacle, a little glitch to getting where you want to go. Make some adjustments. Make some adjustments. Be aware that that might be a challenge that comes up for you as you set this intention for your life. Change a little bit. Unblock the flow. 
and just continue to imagine, continue to imagine yourself having that right now in the present moment, obtaining your goal or desire right now. Imagine what it feels like to have it right now. Imagine what happens when you achieve it right now. Allow yourself to do this, to feel this over and over. And just bring your attention back to the room, back to the here and now. You can use a tool like this to set your intentions. You can use your affirmations. You can use your affirmative prayer. You can use visioning. This is more of a visualization that we just did. You can use all the tools in your spiritual toolbox to create that intention for your life, to create the life that you're wanting to create. You want to see it. You want to know it. You want to affirm it out loud. You want to shout it from the rooftops. Remember, if you can see it, you can be it. Now, once all that is said and done, you've got your beliefs, you've got your values, you've got your intentions, you've got your goals, they're all in alignment, they're all moving. Manifestation happens quickly when you've got everything lined up like that. You're in a roll, you know, but you've taken, you're also taking action. You're also taking action. But before you take that action, I'm going to ask you to surrender it all. To surrender it all to let it go, to release it, to release it into the law, to release it into the universe. Know that you've planted the seed and leave it there. You don't need to go out and check it, dig it up, see what's happening. <laughs> let it be, let it go, release it. And stand back and watch. Stand back and watch the creation that you have created. Stand back and look at the beautiful life that's blossoming before you. Don't worry about the how of it. Just allow that to be spirit expressing through you. The action you take is to spend that time in prayer and meditation, to listen to that still small voice, to listen to your inner knowing, to follow your own guidance and direction. If you get stuck, turn left, turn right. Follow your guidance, but allow it to be Allow spirit to do what spirit does. You know, look for the little synchronicities that show up in life. It's amazing what happens when you set a clear intention. The book that just falls off the bookshelf at your feet. You know, the person you run into at the store that you haven't seen in forever but has the exact answer that you need at that time. You know, spirit shows up in all kinds of amazing and magnificent ways. So recognize, you know, that whatever you're creating is originating from your thought, that your thought is creative, that you are manifesting the life of your dreams. Be clear. Be clear on what you're manifesting. Because believe me, just like me in this confusion, you're manifesting whether you want it or not. I was manifesting that confusion until I realized I didn't need to do that anymore, until I surrendered until I allowed spirit to move through me, until I had the courage to take the risk, to take the action to move forward. It's such a wonderful feeling today to be in alignment, to be in alignment with my dreams and my hopes and my goals, my values, to set those clear intentions. See your practitioner if you need help. Our practitioners are available to help you. That's what they do. They help you uncover any belief system that you might be holding that's keeping you from going where you want to go. So if you find yourself stuck, grab a practitioner after service, get a prayer, set up a private session. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful opportunity to create the most amazing life. So I just want you to go forward this week and create a masterpiece. Create your life. God bless you. Miss Aria, you know, bring her back to the stage. Spirit, walk my feet, love this world with my hands, pull me straight by the heart. 
to your promised land spirit speak my words fill my voice with your song take my life in your hands for to you i belong because thy will be done nothing i can do about it if there's only one and thy will be done spirit dance my feet heal this world with my hands pull me straight to the heart of your promised land spirit paint my dreams with all the colors you are take my faith in your hands into you i will fall because thy will be done nothing i can do about it if there is only one thy will be done there's a board of dreams on my wall cut up magazines picture all the things i want to be and i've told you time and time and time again how it should be but thy will be done spirit dance my feet Heal this world with my hands, pull me straight to the heart of your promised land. Spirit, paint my dreams with all the colors you are. Take my faith in your hands, into you I will fall. Cause thy will be done. Who am I to argue with it if there is only one? Thy will must be done, oh, thy will be done. Nothing I can do about it if there's only one. And thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Beautiful. You know, Aria writes most of the songs that she sings. Isn't she an amazing Thank songwriter you. and singer? Thank you. Thank you. So, so blessed Thank to have you. you. And Jim, Thank you. always. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So it's the time of our service for our offering. So I'm going to invite our... What do we call you guys? Our ushers to come forward, our offerers, our, uh, <laughs> the money takers, <laughs> come on forward. So this is the time that we get to practice the law of reciprocity. As we give, we receive. And that's not why we give, but it is certainly is that giving from the heart that opens up the floodgates to receive it more into your life, whether it be giving of your time, your talent, or your treasures. So we're knowing here at Seaside that this is a time of absolute abundance. This is a time of a absolute onflow of all that is needed here, that Seaside is continually growing and expanding, that this Wednesday night going within service is reaching more and more people every week, knowing that everybody on the podcast is reached, that everybody that needs to be here in this midweek respite is called here to fill up, just knowing that there's an absolute source that moves in through and as each individual here through seaside just let it be being so grateful that that source is here now and so it is and there you go
Thank you. I forgot our prosperity prayer. See, I'm gone for a week and I forget. Melanie, can you bring it up for us? We're going to do it now so we can take it home with us. Ready, say with me. As I give thanks for the good now flowing into my life, I gladly share that good with others. The more I give, the more I receive. I experience a deeper consciousness of peace and security, for I know that I am in the embrace of a warm, loving presence, forever seeking an outlet through me. My cup runneth over. I exist in limitless possibilities. So it is. Thank you for your giving. So I have a few announcements for you tonight before we sing ourselves out of here. And what I want to talk to you about is education. I'm the chair of education here at Seaside, so I always get a chance to plug it. I talk to you about sacred circles. But know that March, even though it's the end of our winter quarter, we have a whole bunch of classes starting. Monday night, the 9th, Sarah Miller, who was Reverend Tammy Mars' daughter-in-law, is teaching a class here. She is teaching a class for the first time, connecting to your higher self. And it's a uh, four-week class, I believe, on Monday evening, 6 to 8.30. And it's all about listening and connecting with that inner knowing. How do we connect into that divine uh, channel that is speaking through us? So join her on Monday evenings. Every Sunday we have a workshop going on. This Sunday, we do not, but the following Sunday, March 15th, we have our very own Jen Phillips here, who's here every Wednesday evening with us. She's going to be doing a workshop on um, nonviolent communication, a language of the heart, language from the heart. She is a certified uh, trainer in nonviolent communication, so we're lucky to have her with us. So that's a Sunday workshop on the 15th. Sign up for that. We have Jill Badonsky back in this wonderful creative time to do her improv workshop. If you don't know Jill or who Jill is, she's a wonderful illustrator, Arthur. Uh, Kaizen Muse Creativity Coach, the founder of Kaizen Muse Creativity. She's going to be here to do one of her improv workshops. We're doing Jill's book in the summer, so we'll be doing a lot more of Jill. But she's here for improv on the 22nd. And then the 29th, we're having our vision board. So as Aria sang around, sang in her song, you can create that vision for your life. Be here on the 29th with Sharon De Leon and do a vision board workshop. Next Wednesday night, Lori Mack will be here. Her talk is I Allow. And I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that helps Wednesday night happen. Thank you, Melanie Bennett, who we had on sound tonight. Thank you, Gregory, on the podcast. You're doing a great job. Jenny Mills, who is our Wednesday night coordinator. Thank you for always being here and making sure we're set up. Aria for music, Jim for music, Jan, our practitioner, Annie Prescott, our other practitioner. Thank you. Please know our practitioners are here. I see a few more of them in the audience. Please go to the chapel right out here after service. Do not leave with anything on your heart. Stay and receive prayer. Stay and receive prayer. It's powerful. Remove any obstacle that you might have in your life. And I'm going to pray now. And then we're going to do our closing song. So just knowing and feeling and sensing that one power and that one presence that is God, that is good, that is only good and only love. I know that there is no other power in this universe but God. There is no other power in this universe but love. And I know that God is that perfect unfoldment, that perfect plan, that perfect ease and grace that spirit is all that there is, and I know that I am one with this source. And just as I know this is true for me, I know it's true for each and every individual in this sanctuary. I know that each person that is here at this going within service this evening is a divine expression of spirit, that each one is that individualized expression of God, the voice of God, the hands of God, the feet of God here on this planet. And I know for each one that their life is blessed, their life is abundant, their life is whole. If there's any health challenges, that those will just dissipate back into the nothingness from which they came. I know that it's each and every individual is here for a purpose, for a reason. That the life plan is unfolding, that their masterpiece is being created even in this moment. That any obstacle just dissolves and dissipates. 
I know for Seaside Center for Spiritual Living that it's a place of absolute abundance. It's a place of divine flow. It's a place of healing. It's a place of light. It's that place on the hill that people come to to feel God, to feel that source, to feel that love, to connect with like-minded individuals, to be in that place of beautiful expression that creative expression of the divine. It is so grateful that I am to know this, so grateful that I am to speak these words. It's with that open heart, with a sense of gratitude for all that I've been given, all that is in my life, all that is yet to be, that I just simply release these words into the divine nature of the law, knowing that it is already done. And so it is. Is my you can't live by myself. Decision. You want to stand for our closing song? It's out to me to give up my heart. Love is my decision. No one else can tell me to stop. And once I decide to change my mind, will show me how love is my decision my decision right here and now love is my decision no one else to dance down that road And no one else can lighten my load. And once I decide to change my mind, God will show. decision right here and now my decision right here and now peace to you all enjoy some refreshments in the family room thank you Yeah, so it worked out. I got to do my lesson.